everyone. Thank you for coming. Can you guys hear me? Yeah? Okay, great. Um, well, awesome. So today, this is a lightning talk. If you have not attended one yet, um, it's about 20 minutes and hoping to just kind of deep dive on one of the newer features within Amazon Detective. Um, but to start, my name is Anna McAfee. I'm a security specialist at AWS. Uh, I focus on three different things, and first being uh, incident response on AWS. So I, I wrote our uh, incident response white paper. I also focus on financial services customers, so helping them uh, with their security posture. And then lastly, uh, generative AI security as well. I've, I've been leading a number of initi initiatives internally on that. So um, we are going to specifically talk about Amazon Detective. So I want to briefly, I know we only have a limited amount of time, talk about what it is and where it fits in within our services. So um, we have, this is our suite of detection and response services. Um, typically, um, I would say in a number of investigations, the starting point is Amazon Guard Duty. So this will detect various threats like uh, credential compromise, um, uh, crypto mining, things along those lines. So this will detect active threats uh, within your AWS environment. Um, I'm going to skip over Macy for the sake of time. Um, Amazon Inspector, that will focus on uh, vulnerabilities. So that is our vulnerability scanner. Each of these will fe feed into Security Hub, and that is your findings aggregation point. And with all of this, you can analyze within Amazon Detective uh, these findings and understand, uh, you know, the, the root cause of um, an incident. So it'll make a bit more sense when we go through and we have like an actual example. So here's really how a uh, detective works on our end. Um, a lot of this, again, is kind of like, abstracted from you, but I think it's important to understand. Um, so we have cloud trail logs, which provide your core logs on AWS. It's your most important log. I always say customers have to set it up, but you have to look at it. Uh, it also looks at EKS logs, VPC flow logs, um, and then your guard duty findings and security hub findings. And so with all of this information, um, you know, it can be tough to make sense of on your own. Um, the idea is Detective will build a uh, graph database. So essentially on the back end, that's what it is. It's a graph database, um, and it makes sense and connects information for you. Um, so you'll have the behavior graph, uh, and that's populated. And then in the console, you'll be able to actually go and look and connect these pieces of information. So, you know, why did we create Detective, right? W with any service, we, we have a number of challenges that we look at from customers. So um, a lot of my customers, they have thousands of alerts, and all of them are listed as high or critical. So then you're like, okay, well, how do I spend my time? Um, and a number of my, my customers as well, they don't have an infinite level or infinite number of skilled security professionals who are, who are ready to uh, be able to analyze you know, a, a Windows event log, but also all the cloud logs and now the generative AI stuff. So there, I would say that there's a, a learning curve and that's also a struggle is getting somebody who is um, familiar with all the technologies in your organization. Um, and then there's also just cost and complexity. Um, so I'd mentioned like the various technologies everyone has to know, but there's a lot of you know cost involved. If you if you have ever looked at your company's SIM bill, it's probably not cheap, right? Uh, it's costly, right? Um, and so uh, one of the ways that, that we thought about with Detective is hopefully make sense of the data that you do have um, and potentially reduce some of the, the the costs and complexities with investigation. So. It's not a free service, I'll be transparent on that, but it can reduce some of the time spent uh, and there is kind of an implicit cost saving. So what does an investigation look like within Amazon Detective? So here we have a guard duty finding, it's in the back, um, it is related to credential exfiltration. So if you've already seen this finding, um, this essentially means your EC2 instance likely had a server-side request forgery um, type vulnerability, and it was uh, compromised. And so within this, this is a high-priority uh, alert within Guard Duty, and if it is a high-priority alert, that means, you know, we think that there's an active security incident. So 
you should definitely, if you take away anything from this, please look at your high severity guard findings. That means we're pretty confident that something bad has happened. And so within this, you could go and you know start, start analyzing. You could go to your sim and say, okay, I want to look at CloudTrail, try and figure out what's going on there. Um, or um, we have the option you can look at um, detective and say, okay, this is correlated to larger activity. Um, something like a server-side request forgery, that is, it is a vulnerability. So you want to figure out how, how did this even happen? Uh, what guard duty is saying is the credentials are compromised, but there is definitely more to it, um, it with this, especially with this specific finding, is there's a vulnerability somewhere. So we're going to click here and say, okay, go to finding group to understand, you know, what's involved in this, what, what guard duty findings are there, uh, and then what entities. So uh, what this will do on our end, um, when we go and look at a, a, a finding group, it will look at um, Amazon Inspector. So like I had said, this is related to probably a vulnerability. Um, Amazon Inspector will provide you the attack surface uh, and vulnerability management. Security Hub uh, will provide that posture management. So we'll look at the configuration of your resources. In the scenario that I had mentioned, uh, it's probably using, well, it's not probably, it's definitely using an EC2 instance metadata service version 1. That would be something that's flagged within Security Hub. So what you want to look at is that kind of correlation between a vulnerability, uh, a bad configuration of an EC2 instance, and then lastly, we saw the exploitation of it uh, because we saw the credentials were in fact compromised. So that last one would be guard duty. So Detective groups all of these for you. Um, so that you can kind of make sense of that. It also will look at some of the raw logs uh, in terms of, you know, maybe what API calls were accessed when there was this credential compromise. So um, in our sample threat scenario, so what we did is we focused this based on like a, a lacework log based on something that was somewhat, you know, real and something we had seen in the wild. So there was a, like a Grafana vulnerability where we saw a, like kind of a chained event. And so I thought you know, it would be an interesting uh, investigation to actually take a look at because you should see multiple issues combined, um, and hopefully it's pretty realistic. Um, so here we have a CVE, uh, server-side request forgery, um, and this would be something a vulnerability scanner would typically pick up. So we're going to, for the sake of this, we're going to look at this. Okay, you could look at this in isolation, um, but we like to group these, right? Um, and so the second one is what I had mentioned, uh, is the EC2 instance metadata service. So this is something you would find in either Config, Security Hub, or there's other cloud security posture management tools out there I know. I'm not going to be ignorant to that. Um, but it would be something that, that is a configuration risk, not necessarily a vulnerability, but it's a configuration risk. Um, and so in this threat scenario, you're not using version 2. Um, so for the sake of time, I'm not going to explain what version 2 and version 1 is, but essentially version 2 is the more secure version and is not subject to server-side request forgery. So um, if you have version 1 and many uh, customers who have been on AWS longer than a few years, they do. Um, so that, that's the gist of uh, the EC2 instance metadata service version 1. So um, next, we'll see a metadata rebind. This actually has to uh, do with the EC2 meta metadata service. Essentially, it says we believe that that you are. This is a guard duty finding to say um, somebody is connecting to the EC2 instance metadata service. They have access to these credentials. Uh, and next is the exfiltrated credential use. So we have two here, uh, and this is something that's changed. I was super passionate about this a few years ago. Um, but we have one where we have accessed, um, somebody has taken the credentials from uh, like a web application, and they have used them outside of AWS. So for us, that was a bit easier to detect if they go and on their home network, and we could look at the IP address and say, this is supposed to be credentials of an EC2 instance. But suddenly it's, you know, in my New York apartment. Like, that doesn't make sense, you know. Um, and then the other one is inside AWS. So one thing we had found is we can't just check for outside AWS because attackers can then just use AWS 
and then you don't get that alert. So that's why we have two different alerts. Is um, essentially one was kind of blind to if the attacker was using AWS. Um, so uh, outside AWS is, I would say, a bit more high fidelity because of just just the nature of it. We know some if it's known to be attached to an EC2, and suddenly you're not. Um, you have a bit more confidence that it's not a false positive. Inside AWS, sometimes there's like strange networking setups, things like that. Um, but the gist of it, this is the threat scenario. We had a CVE. We had um, a bad configuration of EC2 instance meta data service. You should be using version 2, but in our scenario, they were not. And then we also got alerts from guard duty saying somebody accessed the credentials. So um, this is what like detective looks like. So we've kind of largely focused on chaining those together and grouping them, but um, this, is, this is that graph database that I had mentioned in the beginning. It will bring together, uh, you can see like the, in the red is the guard duty findings, well I guess the CV is as well. You can also see like the EC2 instance, the uh, IP addresses, and so within this it's, you know, I, this is a screenshot, but it is interactive, so you could go click through. Um, and so you could spend time going through that, but the new feature and um, the generative AI aspect is actually going through um, and summarizing this for you. So you could go through, and again, it's a pretty graph. I will say I enjoy going and clicking through them. But it is nice for the sake of time to also go through and have this be summarized for you in you know, natural language. So this is the, the newer aspect that we've been working on that makes sense for especially uh, you know, maybe more entry-level analysts who don't want to sit and poke through like I enjoy doing, uh, looking through IP addresses and VPCs that are involved. Um, especially also, in this scenario, we have, I think, what, like 10 or so nodes here. Some of these could have like 50, right? Uh, that does take time to go and sit and sift through. So if you have this summarization like we have, we could see here, um, you know, there was a credential exfiltration, credentials for a Grafana role were used, um, and then there, there was something externally reachable. So this helps you just quickly say, okay, this is a, an issue, provide a, an understanding of what went on. So if we go and we wanna dig deeper into this. So we're gonna click here on the aspect of the guard duty finding itself. We can actually see, okay, here's an EC2 instance. We can see um, you know, the various instance tags. Um, you may be able to kind of quickly look at and see, okay, Grafana stack um, and understand that maybe there's a vulnerability within Grafana. Um, and you could see the related uh, entities there with the guard duty finding. So you can continue to pivot if you'd like, um, but here are the kind of core information related to the guard duty finding. And now let's click on the CVE. So we went from the guard duty finding, then we had the EC2 instance. You're like, okay, well, it looks like this EC2 instance has a vulnerability. So we go and we can look at it and see, okay, oh, well, there's there's a lot of vulnerabilities within this EC2 instance. Then from there, we can actually go and look at the Grafana role. Um, so why would you do this, right? So we saw that there was a CVE, and then the, the CVE was able to get credentials. Well, now you need to figure out what, is that, what do those credentials have access to? Because like, say it has no access, then this is not the end of the world. Um, but say it does have access to modifier infrastructure or access sensitive data, then this is something you want to further look at. And so uh, you would then want to kind of pivot and say, okay, we could see the AWS account. Um, you could see who created this. Um, and you could also see just relevant findings related to this, this IEM role that we know now has been compromised um, so um, after that, I just wanted to at least at a high level understand uh, and provide some, some insight into what are benefits of using you know, generative AI within these investigations. And I know we, it's a lightning talk, we're, we're moving at rapid speed, but it does provide you the in, increased efficiency. So like I had said, you could look through that graph database um, but not all of us have infinite time. And so it provides you a little bit quicker to say, okay, here's a summary of what, what went on, um, especially for more entry-level analysts. It can be really helpful to say, okay, um, let's, let's quickly ex escalate this um, because now we know, okay, this is not good. If there's a CV, credential compromise, and we see it's an externally facing app, uh, which is what we saw in the summary, really provides you that um, time savings. 
And so where are we going with this generative AI and investigations? So we, we focused on like a detective finding groups um, in the summary feature. But in general, if you can't tell by this conference, we're investing a lot in generative AI. And um, we are um, thinking that there's so much opportunity within security operations because, one, if you've worked in security operations, there's so much mundane tasks. You're sifting through massive amounts of data. Um, there's a lot of opportunity to make people's lives easier. Um, and so we're, we're looking for, um, you know, just more opportunities to simplify some of the reporting aspects, um, help with, you know, security expertise. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, opportunities to kind of elevate um, your skills with generative AI, which I think is uh, really helpful for junior analysts, like I've mentioned. Um, and then we also feel like there is an opportunity to reduce your overall spend um, because you can save time on some of the mundane stuff, focus on more uh, the advanced stuff as an analyst where you can, you know, um, essentially simplify some of these things. So, um, and then last, I do want to mention um, one of the things that we're working on, uh, it says RAG, but that's retrieval augmented generation. Um, beyond the scope of a lightning talk, but it is really cool. I'd recommend you guys, if you can, look at some talks on RAG because it's how you can add some internal context to all of this. So you may want to add your internal organization context of, okay, uh, we use Grafana for X, Y, Z, right? You want to have that in an investigation. So RAG can kind of help with some of that. Um, so I know this was a rapid lightning talk, but I hope this was uh, helpful and I really appreciate you guys' time. <laughs>